Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. David Pugh. I'm a staff scientist at the Cal's Visualization Core Laboratory. And today I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a content environment for PyTorch on IBEX. OK, so I've already logged into IBEX. And I've already installed Miniconda in my home directory. So that's going to give me access to the Conda tool. Uh, if you're not certain how to install Miniconda in your home directory, please check out a video on our YouTube channel that explains how to do this. Um, the process uh, is fairly straightforward, involves cloning a Git repo and running a bash script. There's lots of instructions and, as I said, a video uh, on our YouTube channel. So please go ahead and do that first. And once you've installed Miniconda in your home directory, then you can come back and watch this video to learn how to install PyTorch properly. OK, so as I said, I'm logged into IBEX. I'm in the user home directory. and even though by default, Conda is going to install environments into the user home directory, my preference is to install Conda environments within my project directories, which typically live on Scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change to the Scratch directory for my user. And then I'm going to make a project directory. So I'll call this, um, because we're making an environment for PyTorch, PyTorch project directory. And then I will change into that directory. And you can see that there's nothing in this directory. Um, and But it's an empty project directory. So this is where we're going to create our environment for PyTorch. OK, so now let us visit uh, the PyTorch website. OK, so on the PyTorch website, if you click on Getting Started, you'll be taken to um, some instructions on how to install PyTorch on whatever your operating system might be. So we're going to be installing on IBEX. So IBEX runs a flavor of Linux as the operating system. So if we click on Linux, so we're going to be using Conda. We're installing for Python. And now we need to choose a CUDA version. So the default CUDA version for PyTorch is 10.2. Um, you need to make sure that you pick a CUDA version that's compatible with the drivers that are available on IBEX. So IBEX actually has um, CUDA 11 drivers. Uh, you can check that if you just run uh, NVIDIA SMI on the login node, you'll see that um, you have the, the driver version and the CUDA uh, version that those drivers are compatible with. So we can use CUDA 11. Now, if you need to use CUDA 10.1 or CUDA 10.2, that's fine. Um, you can install that version of CUDA, um, and it will work. These drivers are kind of backwards compatible in that sense. So we're going to be using um, CUDA 11. So I'll just install the most recent uh, version that we can. Um, right, so I'm going to now clear this out. And instead of using the provided uh, conda command, I am going to create a conda environment file and then install my conda environment from that file. I think this helps with uh, reproducibility and portability of your environment if you need it. So to do that, I am going to create an environment file. And environment files have a particular structure. Um, if you're unfamiliar with environment files, then you can check out our uh, Conda training on, on our YouTube channel. It covers all different aspects of how to create environment files. But every environment file must have a name. So I'll just call this my PyTorch environment. And then you always want to specify which channels, which are places where um, Conda will look to install packages. So you should always have a channel section in your PyTorch in, or in your Conda environment files. So here we're going to need to use the PyTorch channel because that's where you'll get your official uh, versions of PyTorch, followed by the Conda Forge channel, which is where you're going to get CUDA, uh, CUDNN, Nickel, any of your CUDA libraries from, and then followed by the defaults channel. It's very important when working with PyTorch to remember to include this PyTorch channel. That is because there are unofficial builds of PyTorch that are available on Conda Forge. And if you do not specify PyTorch, you may end up getting one of those unofficial builds. And you really want the official builds of, um, of PyTorch. OK, 
So now we're going to list our dependencies. And so of course we're going to need uh, PyTorch. And then we're going to need, um, I'll just add torch vision and um, torch audio. The order in which you list these dependencies doesn't matter. I tend to try to put things in alphabetical order um, because I'm a bit of a pedant, but that's okay. Uh, and CUDA toolkit. Now notice I haven't been putting any version numbers uh, as of yet. And that's because I'm going to allow Conda to pick the most recent versions available for those packages. But for CUDA Toolkit, I want to be very specific and say I need CUDA 11.0. Okay, and then the last two things I want to do is to be uh, explicit that I want to install uh, Python, and then I want to explicitly install pip. And explicitly listing pip in your environment file is very important. So it may be the case that pip would be installed uh, because it might be listed as a dependency of one of these other packages anyway. But it's very, very important that you install pip in all of your Python-based conda environments. And the reason is that if you ever need to install a package with pip because it's just not available via the defaults or any other conda channel, then you really want to make sure that you're using a pip that's installed in your conda environment to do that pip install. That way, when you run the pip install command, you can be confident that pip will actually install those packages inside your conda environment and not somewhere else on your, uh, on your file system. And this, this, um, this is very important because it'll save you time down the road because it will make sure that everything is installed in your conda environment and not somewhere else in your operating system um, in Scratch or in your home directory, somewhere else, which makes it very difficult to figure out what's going on. It can break your environment, your conda environments. So always install pip in your conda environment. Okay, so there we go. That looks good. So I will save that. And now I will run the conda command to create an environment um, inside a directory called env, which lives inside my uh, my project directory. Um, so note this is a relative path from my current directory to the directory who, where I want to install the conda environment. Uh, and then I am using an environment file. And then I'm going to add this force option which basically, if there was a pre-existing environment in that directory, it would remove it and then reinstall from scratch. So this is just kind of my preferred way to get um, consistent and reproducible conda builds is to always rebuild my environment from scratch whenever I'm adding or removing dependencies. Um, it adds a little bit of time because it takes a little bit longer to build a conda environment each time, but um, conda does a lot of caching and so that uh, speeds the process up, um, but it just gives you uh, confidence that you have a clean, reproducible build. So I would recommend this approach. Okay. Now, Conda is going through its usual environment creation process uh, based on the specifications in your environment file. Um, and it's just checking to find the most recent versions of those packages to make sure it can find a set of versions that are mutually consistent. Uh, again, given the constraints that you've imposed in your environment file. In this case, the only thing I imposed was the channel priorities, um, PyTorch, ContaForge, and then defaults, and a version number on my CUDA toolkit. Sometimes the solving step can take a while depending on how many packages you're installing. You may also find, uh, particularly if this is the first time that you're building a PyTorch environment on Ibex, that Conda will need to download a lot of, uh, a lot of package archives. Now, Conda caches those, um, and so if you use the same version of the same package again, then um, Conda will reuse that cache and won't need to download everything. So I've actually run this uh, environment uh, creation process 
this morning already to pre-cache everything just to make this video go a little bit faster. But if you find yourself with kind of downloading a whole bunch of archives and then extracting them, that's okay, that's to be expected. Uh, it just might mean that your environment creation step this first time could take considerably longer than, um, than what happens here in this video. Okay, so there we go. Now we're done and we can activate the environment. Now when you activate an environment by prefix, you don't actually have to pass in this entire uh, absolute path from the file root and file system all the way to your con environment. You can actually just provide the relative path. And now, um, again, you can just confirm that the Python binary is coming from our environment and not somewhere else in the operating system. You can check that your pip is coming from your environment and not somewhere else on the operating system. Always good to check which pip. Um, just in case, if you forgot to include pip in your environment file and pip wasn't installed as a dependency of some other package, then this which pip would either say pip not found or it would give you a path that was somewhere else in your operating system. If you had, like, for example, installed pip in your home directory, which a lot of users seem to seem to have done. You really want to make sure that this pip is coming from inside the bin directory, which is in your environment. Okay. And now if we were just to check that PyTorch has been installed, so we can do Python and then we can do import torch. Cool. Okay, so a couple other uh, tips and tricks. So let's go ahead and deactivate this environment. And I'm going to clear this out. So I like to um, wrap my uh, Conda environment creation inside of a bash script. Um, that way uh, it makes it a little bit faster to, um, to run the Conda environment creation commands. Um, also makes it a little bit easier if I have a more advanced environment creation step that might involve um, some extra installation steps, some uh, compilation steps, things like this. Um, sometimes those more advanced uh, PyTorch environments need to be um, actually launched as a job uh, on IBEX in order to get things to compile properly. Um, I'll be making another video with a more advanced example that demonstrates how to do that. Um, but wrapping your Conda environment creation in a bash script is really helpful for those use cases as well. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that now. So I tend to create a keep my bash scripts for projects inside a bin directory. So I'm going to go ahead and make a bin directory. And then I will CD into that bin directory. And so now what I'm going to do is I am going to um, create a shell script and I'll just call it create uh, conda environment dot shell. And inside that, I'm going to add a um, uh, the first line of my shell script should be uh, path to the Python interpreter or the Bash interpreter that I want to use. Um, I typically like to run my environment creations uh, using a login shell, and that makes sure that uh, Conda commands can be properly utilized within this Bash script. Um, so I'll add a dash dash log in there. And now I'm going to just add the environment creation command. So it's just going to be conda emv uh, create prefix uh, file and then the force option. OK. Now, um, just to make this a little bit more explicit as to what is going on. So the way that I've written this bash script expects that this conda environment create command is going to be run within a directory that contains this environment.yaml file and that can, uh, the environment itself will be created in a subdirectory emv of the directory in which the script is run not in which the script is saved but with in which the script is run so just to make that a little bit more clear i'm going to create a variable called project dir and 
I am going to assign that the value of PWD, which will be the working directory in which the script is run. And then I'll come over here and I'll just reference that environment variable twice. And make sure there's no typos. Okay. And remember, the uh, dash dash force option is going to delete any environment that already exists uh, at that prefix and then reinstall from scratch. Okay, so if we do, so we can see here's our environment creation script. Um, it's not executable yet. So if you look at the permissions over here, you'll see that it has uh, read write permissions. Um, for the user, but not executable permissions. So we need to make this conda or this shell script executable so we can run it. So we'll do um, to do that. We'll use change mod user plus x. So that's giving executable permissions to the user for a particular file. And now, if we look at that again, you can see that this conda uh, environment creation script is now green, which is kind of a a visual indicator that it's an executable script, and now we have executable permissions for the user. Cool. Uh, and now just to show you that this actually works as expected, so remember we're in the binary directory, so we need to, or the bin directory, so we need to go up to the parent directory. So this is our project directory. And from here, now we will run this environment creation script. And now the environment creation process has started. So it's now it's doing the exact same thing that it did before. Um, it's just removing that environment uh, file and then it, or that environment directory, and then it's going to reinstall. Now, if you're running this script uh, the second time you, or when you run this script, because it's creating the environment the second time, everything should have already been downloading cached. So the second time will go a lot faster uh, because it will be using a lot of pre-cached archives and won't need to download anything. Okay, there we go. And again, we can activate this environment. And now if we want to see everything that's installed, we can do a conda list command. And we'll just go through here and see, you know, even though we only had like five dependencies, there's lots of stuff that's been installed. So obviously installing um, PyTorch for Python 3.9, CUDA 11, and QDNN 8 installed um, a whole bunch of things. So you've got NumPy in here, you've got MKL. Um, that's because the official PyTorch binaries from the PyTorch channel um, come uh, pre-compiled against Intel's math kernel library. So you get all of the CPU 
uh, performance that you would get from uh, MKL. Um, and also the NumPy versions will also be compiled with, uh, uh, with MKL. Um, and then what other goodies are in here? Um, so here's our CUDA toolkit uh, from Conda Forge. Um, and I guess that's the only other thing worth. And then here's Torch Audio and Torch Vision. And then all the other stuff are mostly dependencies of, of Python, I guess. OK, cool. Uh, well, hopefully that has walked you through the process from creating a uh, PyTorch environment using Conda from scratch uh, on Ibex. So good luck with your PyTorch projects. And look out for some uh, new videos coming with more advanced PyTorch builds uh, for PyTorch Geometric and maybe Horvod and PyTorch and other, uh, other kind of more advanced Conda environments for PyTorch. Please uh, leave us some feedback. So comments are always appreciated or, um, or reach out and contact us at KVL if you have any questions about PyTorch on IBEX.